Hi everyone, welcome back to Sustainability Matters. This is episode 2.2, which follows on from our previous video of what you need to know about IFRS S1 and S2. Now that we have a background understanding of the ISSB and S1 and S2, this second video will focus on what you will need to consider to disclose in accordance with these standards. While reporting in accordance with S1 and S2 is not yet mandatory in Australia, several Australian regulators and agencies, including ASIC and AASB, have endorsed them. ASIC have also recommended that Australian listed companies adopt the TCFD recommendations in preparation for the transition to S1 and S2. Because of the complex nature of sustainability reporting, organisations should consider taking steps now to understand and prepare for what may be coming. The first critical question organisations should be asking themselves is whether they have the people, processes and systems to meet the reporting requirements of the standards. As some of the data required for reporting may sit outside of the traditional ERP and finance systems such as greenhouse gas emissions, regulatory compliance, and supply chain information. Have you identified where relevant data is located and if data gaps exist? And following on from Nicole's questions, more broadly, have you conducted a readiness assessment against the reporting requirements? Are greenhouse gas emissions being measured? And to what extent? Does that include scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions? Have you identified and assessed sustainability and climate related risks and opportunities? And if so, have you analyzed the financial impact through scenario analysis over various time horizons, for example, five, 10 and 15 years? And how is climate related and sustainability related risk information communicated up to executive leadership teams, the board and audit and risk committee? By asking these questions and taking these steps to review existing processes, Organisations can identify gaps and develop formalised strategies, roadmaps and action plans to improve the quality of sustainability information, resources and capabilities. Ultimately, it will also put organisations in a better position to meet the disclosure requirements of S1 and S2. Thank you for tuning in to Sustainability Matters and we hope you enjoyed episode 2.1 and 2.2 in this series. We would love to hear from you, so if you have any questions, please reach out to us in our ESG services team. Thank you and see you next time.